Before we get started, I want to talk a little bit more about drum plugins and drum samples. When drum samples are recorded, they're recorded in studios all over the world. And they're recorded in a way that we get different articulations and velocity hits to each drum. And that's what really gives us the ability to create realistic sounding drum tracks. Because when the drum is triggered, we have the ability to make it not always triggered from the same sample. And when we trigger a drum from the same sample, you get that well-known machine gun sound. And that's going to make your drums not sound realistic. I've set up a track to show you what multi-layer samples sound like. Let's start with the snare. As you can hear, we have four very different velocities. A soft, medium, hard, and smack hit. Let's listen to a tom. And lastly, we have a nice crash cymbal. So that's multi-layer samples in a nutshell. You may hear me use that term in the rest of the videos in this series, and I wanted to make sure that you understood exactly what I mean. Now, I'm going to be using Steven Slate drums in this tutorial. The reason I chose Steven Slate drums is because it's an affordable plugin and has some really great drum sounds. Now, if you don't plan on purchasing more software, don't worry. Most DAWs have built-in samples somewhere within the program. So explore your DAW and find the samples already available to you. Let's take a look inside our virtual instrument drum plugin. Now, as you can see, we have a drum kit loaded already. This is a preset kit, and this kit contains a kick snare, four toms, a hi-hat cymbal, a ride cymbal, two crash cymbals, a splash cymbal, and a china. Now I can audition my drums simply by clicking on this piano roll at the bottom. Now your plugin may have a picture of a drum set or a different way, but all plugins will have a way to audition each individual drum in the drum kit. We also have a list of instruments and our preset kits. Now, each individual drum has its own characteristics that can be changed. Now, as you can see, we can solo and mute each channel, which comes in handy when you are making adjustments to an individual drum and want to make sure you can solo it out. We also have a tune knob that's going to change the tune or tone of our drums in a semi-tone fashion. Let me give you an example of that right now. I don't use this option very often, but you might find a great use for it. Now we also have the ability to turn our overheads on or off. This is something I like to leave on because when you're tracking drums in a studio, you're using multiple microphones. And in those multiple microphones, you're going to have a residual bleed from each drum. Now the snare drum is going to go into the overheads and the toms are going to go bleed into the overheads. If we leave this on, we get a more realistic feel to our drum sounds. We also have the option of a room mic. We can turn it off and we have two different rooms that we can send our drums to. We're gonna wanna leave the room sound on because it creates a booming rock feel to our drums. It was a sound made famous by John Bonham and has been a staple in rock drumming ever since. Within our drum instrument, we can change different parameters on each individual instrument within the kit. We have access to change the dynamics, the depth, the direct mic volume, the room mic volume, and the panning. Now this drum set is set up for drummer's perspective. We have the kick and the snare pan to the center, and from small to large, the toms go from left to right. Now that's a good indication that we're in drummer's perspective. Also, the hi-hat is to the left. Now you can reverse all these for audience perspective. It's all what you want for your song and your project. Now as far as direct and room mics go, you want to have more direct mic signal than room signal because that's typically how real drums are recorded and mixed. Let's take a listen to our snare using only the direct mic and then we'll slowly bring in the room mic. Now as you can hear, as we bring in the room mic, the drums have a sense of space or their own ambience. 
and that's what's going to give us that excellent rock drum sound. Another amazing feature that drum plugins have is a mix window built into the plugin. We had the luxury of actually mixing our entire drum set all within the plugin. Each drum has a dedicated fader, insert slots for extra processing, and a route matrix to route out your signal. So if you wanted to print each drum to its own track, you could do that. Now when I start my session, I generally like to just start out with a preset. The presets sound really good, they're all pre-mixed, and a really good starting point for your project. This way you can get started on your song and tweak the sounds later. But if you feel like you want to change out some drums or check out some different sounds, that's no problem either. Access your instrument list and select a drum you want to change. Let's say we don't want kick 7. We'll put in kick 10. So we've changed the drum. We'll add some depth, maybe turn up the volume a little bit. And after we've completed changing our drum set, we're going to want to save it. I like to keep my drum sets separate from the plugin presets. That's just a personal preference of mine. It lets me know what I have from the plugin and what I've created myself. I like to save my kits in the plugin. So I'm going to click here, Save Settings As. And I've already saved this kit as Avenues Rock Drums. That way, if I have another session I'm working on and I really like that drum set, I can go back and remember I used it on the Avenues Rock Song. And again, it's separate from all the preset kits that I have with my Stephen Slate drums. In this video, we've discussed multi-layer drum samples and how they allow us to create realistic drum tracks, the built-in library within our DAW, our instrument and preset list, changing individual parameters on individual drum pieces, the piano roll and the ability to audition each piece of our kit, our dedicated mixer window, and the functions available to us. In the next video, we'll create a guide track to program our drums to. Thanks for watching.